what is up and welcome back guys so a couple of months ago i did a video on my recommendations at the top 20 tools under 20 bucks and i asked you guys that if you had any tools in your shop that cost less than 20 bucks that you would recommend to drop those into the comments for our woodworking community and you had some pretty awesome ideas so what i did was the most popular suggestions i went ahead and purchased them just so i could try them myself just because i will not recommend anything that i have not tried some of these items i completely loved and some of them I just don't think that I'll use that much. And like myself, you may run across something that you've never seen or used before and decide that it would be perfect for your shop. I have a lot of cool stuff in here to show you. So let's go ahead and dive into this video and into this box. Corner clamps. I actually owned a set of these, but there were several people that suggested them and you can pick them up for less than 20 bucks. And for those of you guys that aren't familiar with them, it comes with this little set of pliers. It's made to go inside of the clamp to open it. So where I find that they come in super handy, which you can use these from box joints or any other type of a joint, but crown. Getting crown to stay in place while you glue it up is almost impossible unless you put brad nails in. But let's say that I do not want nails in this. So I would line it up with the clamp in. There is one downside to these types of clamps. These things are sharp. It will leave little dents in the wood. So if you're gonna use these, try to put them in places that will not be seen. And then once your project is dry, you just put your clamps back in and release. So they're pretty handy. And like I said, they are sharp. Let's just see how sharp that they are. Well, that wasn't so bad, but uh, this is how you make a duct tape band-aid. That's uh, kind of a trick that every woodworker needs to know. So as you've seen, these things can come in super handy if you're trying to glue up any type of mitered corner. And just a quick tip on mine, I keep mine just on one of these little clips. If not, they end up getting scattered all over your shop. So just throw them on one of these little clips and you can keep them all in a nice, neat little bundle. Kind of looks like a set of custodian keys. And the next item is an architectural scale ruler. This is really not a woodworking item. And these are my favorite types of items. These things are pretty neat and really they're designed for architects to scale down items like house plans. So on each side of this will actually represent different scales. So if you want to scale something down one eighth, half, quarter, three thirty seconds, you can actually lay something out and each one of these measurements actually stand for feet. Depending on the scale, this is one quarter, but we're not architects, at least I'm not. One of the sides is just your typical ruler. So I'll show you why I like to use it. This is kind of an odd thing, but if I'm drawing something out or if I'm even marking a line on wood using the typical flat rulers, always by the time I get to the end, my ruler has moved. It slides on whatever surface that I have it on. But the shape of this ruler is actually designed so you can put your fingers in here and you can hold it from the top and it's not going anywhere. And this one was one of my favorite suggestions. It is a drafting compass. So again, something that's not really intended for carpentry. I actually have an older one and this one was actually intended for sewing, but it's pretty roached out. So I decided to go ahead and order this set less than 20 bucks and well worth the money. So usually whenever you think of a compass, you just think about drawing circles. They're perfect for drawing circles. But what I really liked about this new one was its ability to add attachments and actually transform. You can add an extension arm and I actually put the pencil that I use in there, but you can put markers or whatever that you would like. And it will allow you to draw large radius circles. And to make that even easier, you can actually change the shape of the compass itself to make it easier to draw your circles. You've taken a compass that was limited to smaller diameter circles and now have the ability to draw circles almost 12 inches wide. So another use for a compass would be a step tool. So we want to rip this board down into four equal strips. You're gonna guesstimate how wide one fourth would be. Start at the outside edge, two wide, just. Now we have four equally spaced sections. So I'd normally be doing this with my own pencil, but so you guys can see this a little bit better, I'm gonna be using this Sharpie. Another cool use for a compass, let's say we wanted an edge with a radius on it. A lot of times we would just use a can or something round, but if you wanted something larger, let's say you wanted a two inch radius, and then from the center point, and now you have a nice rounded corner. 
Remember the star cutout build that we did not too long ago? Well, this is one of the ways that you could draw a perfect star. On this one, I'm not going to explain every single step, but you'll get the point. There are videos out there that will explain how I'm doing this. And really, it may look a bit complicated, but it's not hard at all. And once you do it once, you've got it. So there's your star. Don't you see it? There are a couple different methods that you can use to draw a perfect star. But I like this way because you can determine the exact size. You know, there are thousands of designs that you can make with a compass. Another example would be if you had a piece of wood that you would like to make an octagon. And again, these are just a few examples, but the possibilities with a good compass are endless. So this next one, Craig's Quick Flip. This thing is awesome. So either this thing came out in between the two videos or it's been out for a while and I just didn't know about it. This is one I just happened to see at the store. It fit the price range because I really didn't know what it was for and how to use it. Impulse buy, some people dig on Snickers, I dig on tools. And now this is one of my go-to tools. If you haven't used one of these before, let me show you how it works. It's kind of an all-in-one tool. So if you're doing a Craig project, and let's say that you have pocket holes in part of the project, but you're going to be installing regular screws in another part of the project that you do not want seen. That's where this comes in. This end is a countersink and a pre-drill, which can all be adjusted using the opposite end of the tool, so the part that actually chucks up. That's a tiny Allen. So let's say if I wanted to pre-drill a little deeper, if you just loosen this up, extend your bit, and then tighten that back up. And on the opposite end of this, let's say that you do not want to use pocket hose screws. You can actually take this bit out and put in any type of a bit that you would like. Pretty awesome. Let me show you how it works. And then it will actually stop you there. And you have your countersink and your pre-drill. Say I want to connect my material with a pocket hose screw. Then you would just slide the collar forward. And then with this pre-drilled hole, you could easily just throw in a dowel, cut that off, and then you have a hidden joint. I had a ton of you all mention one, two, three blocks. I'd never used them before, and I knew that they were more for mill work. But you know me, I love any type of tool that was intended for something else. And Carpenter saw that potential and started using them in our field. So I went ahead and ordered a cheap set, and I had no clue on how to use these things. So what I did was watch a video by Stumpy Nubs and... It makes sense. So let me show you what I learned about these and then I'll give you my opinion on them. And for those that do not know about one, two, three blocks, the reason why they're called that is because this is one inch, this is two inch, and this is three inch. So you can actually use it as a measuring device. Probably one of the best uses that I've actually seen for this is making sure that, that your fences are perfectly square. And it would be good for making sure that your table saw fence is square or if the blade was high enough, you could actually check the blade I guess if you wanted to, you could use it as one inch, two inch, or three inch measuring device, but I already have a ton of tools that will do all of that. And another use that I saw that they used it for was for checking your bandsaw blades for square or even your fence. But again, what's the difference in this and a typical square? I do like the fact that they are heavy. I mean, they're nice, heavy blocks. And I know that some of these holes are threaded and you can connect them, but I really don't see the benefit of these versus any other type of square. So if you guys know of any other applications that I could use these for that normal carpentry tools will not do, make sure to let me know. I love to use any type of tool with woodworking that actually wasn't meant to be a woodworking tool. And this next one is a center finding ruler. So as big of a weirdo as I am about loving measuring tools, I did not have one of these. and they're durable. And to be honest, I really didn't know what their purpose was. I mean, obviously by the name, I knew that they were to help find center, but I really didn't realize how much I would actually use it. So basically the way that it works, it has a zero point in the center and then you have one inch, two inch. So let's say on this piece of wood here, which is 12 and 13 sixteenths, I want to find the center of it. So instead of pulling out the calculator, doing the math, we can move this side to side until the edges read the same. So once you have both of your edges reading the exact same, you know that this is your center point. And then you can go from that center point, two inches, four inches, however that you like. Whenever I was ordering this, I noticed they come in all different sizes. They come in the 12 inch, 24 inch, all the way up to the 48. Say we're doing the long side of this. And then once you're equal on both sides, I know that this is the center of my board. 
And this next item is nail puller pliers. So these are actually mine. As you can see, they are very old and I've used them thousands and thousands of times. And I believe that every woodworker out there needs a set of these. And I know what you're saying. I can just use regular pliers. Well, we've all done it. We've shot a brad nail in and it kicked out the side or it's standing too proud to set. So we've just taken our pliers, bent it out and left a big mark in our material. These are designed to not do that. I really don't know the technical name for these. So if you do drop them into the comments, I just call them nail pullers. So with this arched edge, it allows you to grab a hold of your nail and then roll it out. It does not damage your wood or leave any type of mark. So these things are awesome. They are a lifesaver. This is one of my go-to tools for any type of nail removal and I always keep them handy. So and then we have a Harbor Freight doweling jig. I think this thing was around 20 bucks. So I was a little skeptical about this from the beginning just because there are certain things that I love to buy from Harbor Freight and there are certain things that I do not. This thing was a complete waste of money. I actually had full intentions of actually using this and you know demonstrating a couple of joints but i decided to not even waste my time with that so right out of the box i've noticed that these little thin probably 16th of an inch washers are holding this whole thing together and that wasn't even really my biggest problem look at the slot that's in this well i guess you could say it really doesn't matter as long as it's even on the board now that's tight with the slop and there's no way to tighten that up I've tried tightening this Allen. I've tried loosening this Allen. So this is at least an eighth of an inch of slop here. So there's no way that you're gonna be able to get two boards perfectly joined with dowels using this. And the reason why they've milled the holes for these guides too large for the guide itself. And there's no way to lock that in. So with that being said, I'm not even going to try to drill a hole because I know with this, it will not match up. So don't waste your money on this. It's a piece of junk. So this is one of the items that I disagree with. Maybe I just got a bad one. So my general rule of thumb with Harbor Freight and correct me if I'm wrong, anything that does any type of precision work, kind of veer away from it. So if you know of any great Harbor Freight tools that I may be missing out on, let me know, drop them down into the comments. I'd love to check them out, but this is not one of them. Thank you guys so much for watching. So if you like the video and what this channel is about, do not forget to hit that subscribe button and follow for more. Hope you were able to learn something from this video, even if it was something that you wanna make sure to not buy. But if you did see something that you like, I'll make sure to throw the links in the description for all of these different items. If you did not see something in this video or the last one that would be a benefit to woodworking, make sure to drop it in the comments. That's how we learn about these different types of tools that could save us a lot of time and a lot of headache. So make sure to share that with me as well as the community. If you have not had a chance to check out our Patreon community, I'll throw a link to that in the description. So until next time, guys, what I want you to do is to find that inexpensive tool, maybe even something that wasn't intended for carpentry at all, but you know that it will benefit your shop and cut your build times down. Go ahead and pick that up and put it to work. Till next time, guys, we'll see ya.